Breaking news this morning, Sophie Turner is alleging that Joe Jonas is illegally keeping her kids from her in New York City while she's in the UK. She cites child abduction laws. Oof, this seems like it's going to get really ugly. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. Whenever there's celebrity divorce, you know who to call. It's Christopher Melcher. So happy you're here, sir. This seems like this is going to be problematic. Are my guts correct, Chris? Oh, yeah. This is fight on. So it's not just the normal divorce where you have issues of property and support and embarrassment moving forward, you know, separately kind of thing. This is a fight over their kids where she's saying um, they belong with her in England and there is no pretty fight here uh, when you have international disputes. It, it's like it's going to be one parent in England and the other parent in the United States. And it is it is the ugliest type of dispute that you could have. Um, I'm really, really sorry to see that this is going on, but this is uh, this is not going to settle quickly. This is going to get ugly real fast. Well, I want I want to talk to you about that, but I, I want to before we even go, I get to that. It, to me, this now screams that there was clearly intent behind all those gossip and things that were coming out from Joe Jonas's team where they were trying to paint her as a mother. Am I crazy? And now seeing that maybe there was a longer thing at play in the press because they potentially knew this was going to become a heated issue because we had a lot of rumors, right? She's a partier. She doesn't want to go out with the kids and all this stuff was leaking about. So there was a ring camera. She did something wrong. It really did feel like Joe Jonas PR. And we had Molly on. You guys seem to agree that Joe Jonas PR was, was almost too aggressively in tow. Do you think that was a preemptive attempt to try to get ahead of this? Yeah. Th these, these custody battles are absolutely disgusting. And what ends up happening I mean, we 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 identified before from there was a L like E L L E UK article that Sophie um, was interviewed for last year, I believe it was, where she said, you know, she kind of considers her home England, wants to be there, and definitely was was indicating that that's where she wanted to be, and obviously with her kids, and that's a big warning sign uh, to. Joe, if their marriage is kind of on the rocks, because that means if they split, she's going to wind up going right back to England and he's going to want to be here. And you just can't share kids when you're living on different continents and have any meaningful relationship. It just doesn't work. And so what it what's possible here is that he was laying the groundwork for a custody battle by trying to undermine her as a parent and by planting these stories about her being a partier and doing all this stuff. Now, this is awful, and, and men do it to women and women do it to men. So it's not just strictly, you know, by gender that we see these things. And um, what's so awful about it is that these folks got together and got married and had kids. So obviously they thought they were like the best people in the world for each other. And now all of a sudden when they're breaking up, oh, they're awful. This other person is awful, shouldn't be around the kids, not a good parent. And fine, they can attack each other that way. But when we have kids, you know, our kids are part of us and they're part of, you know, we, we are all together. We're mixed up here. And so when when one parent attacks the other parent, they're really telling the child, you know, there's something wrong with them because it's like they should not love that parent. It's really sends horrible messages to kids when you see parents attacking each other. And so... You know, and we also see double standards. It's like, OK, fine. She goes out and has a drink with a friend or goes to a club or lets loose or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. Parents, great parents do that. Um, she needs time to herself. And and so why why does she get criticized for doing that? But he doesn't. And I, there is some kind of unfortunately still some bias there that women are held to different standards of conduct than men. Um, and then on the other side, men are also get really unfair treatment in family law cases because they're, you know, the stereotype is, hey, go out and work and pay support and, and mom will stay home and take the kids. And that's absolutely awful for dads. So yeah. this is a broken system and you see awful people pulling those strings. And that's what I'm concerned about. Now also, I'm sorry on my rant here, but for Sophie, to say, 
I really, you know, I'm from England. I love England. My family's in England. Now that we're breaking up, I'm going to England with these kids. You know, is that's not necessarily a child-centered view either because dad isn't from England. He doesn't live there. He doesn't have family there. And basically, this is really polarizing. So, you know, my view, my biased view is when you have kids together and you break up, you really need to stay together if all possible, um, because that's the only way you can have a meaningful relationship with both parents. So, you know, she she's definitely saying, hey, I'm grabbing these kids and I'm running to England. And he's saying, no, you're not. Well, Christopher, it gets even crazier. I mean, she, I got to say, she's she's played the long game here because the other news that dropped the other day, and I just thought, well, she's trying to respond. She went arm in arm with his other ex, Taylor Swift, who took the meeting and clearly got the paparazzi there to get this photo op. This was a, a, a ton of photos of them arm in arm leaving after a dinner together, which, I mean, this if this isn't a PR move, I don't know what is. But after all the, the lashing that Sophie seemed to take, Taylor stepped in and was like, yeah, let's go get photographed together and help. I mean, the, the, clearly Joe can't like this. I mean, there, there's a lot going on here behind the scenes. Let's go through sort of what's being alleged here in this. Um, they're going to war of the two kids. She, she says Joe is unlawfully keeping the kids in New York and wants them returned to England. Sophie says in April 2023, the family made England their permanent home and regularly discussed their desire to raise the kids in the UK and for the kids to attend school there. She says they felt England was a safe place to raise kids and they were both down with the plan. She had a lengthy passage in her legal docs outlining all the activities in which the kids have engaged in England. She says, with some hesitation, she and Joe agreed the kids would stay with Joe while the Jonas Brothers toured the U.S. because she was busy shooting a very intense, time-consuming series. Sophie says that the agreement was that in September, when she finished filming, she would return to New York to collect the children and return home to England. This past Sunday, Sophie and Joe met to talk about the separation, and she reiterated her desire to take the kids to England that week. Joe was in possession of the kids' passports and refused to return the passports to the mother and refuses to send the children home to England with their mother. Messenger was first to report of the lawsuit. Based on Joe's alleged refusal, she filed the documents in court citing the Ho Hague, Hague, Hague Convention International Treaty, which deals with children abduction across country lines. She's asking for a court order demanding that Joe produce the passports and return the kids to her. Um, by the way, Sophie gets into why they split. She says they had an argument on October 1st, uh, August 15th, and Joe filed for divorce September 1st. She found out September 5th through the media. She adds they had both agreed the kids would follow her to England in September, but on September 9th, Joe's attorney contacted her people and said the kids would not be returning to England. We reached out to Joe's camp so far in a word. So again, if this is all true, yeah, this is now getting entirely messy. It's really sad for the kids. I guess, does she have this right? Will they, if she, who, does he get to withhold the passports if the kids are in the U.S.? What what is your advice there? Sure. So um, there is what they're citing to is this Hague uh, uh, Convention on the Civil Aspects of Parental Abduction of 1980. Now many countries have um, you know are treaty partners or have acceded to that treaty. Uh, England and the U.S. are treaty partners on this, and um, so basically what that treaty says is that um, if if the child or children have a country of habitual residence, so it's a one-year look-back period, is where were they living and where did they call their home um, for the last year? And um, that becomes in their country of habitual residence. And if one parent removes the child from that country of habitual residence and refuses to return um, or is allowed to go on, let's say, a vacation, a lot of times this is kind of works as like, hey, honey, I'm, I'm going on a trip and never return, so now they're detaining the child outside the country of habitual residence, that you could bring an action for the immediate return of that child. Now, um, so that's just, you know, the classic abduction. Somebody just runs with the, with the kid, and I deal with this a lot. Um, now, the problem here for Sophie is that she's declaring, hey, England was the home of the kids, and she has some evidence that she's going to cite about that. But Joe has in his court papers that he's filed in uh, Miami, uh, Florida, which I've taken a look at, he declares under oath that the kids have called their home Florida for the last year, not England. 
So there's going to be a factual dispute. Um, it, it's not just a physical presence. So it's not where you are. It's kind of it's more of a domicile concept here for The Hague. So where do you call home? Mm-hmm. Now, um, so basically, because he's filed first in the United States, he's declared under oath that, you know, for at least the last six months, if not a year, the children have been um, residing in uh, or living with at least one of the parents in Florida, that the Florida court's going to have to determine if that's true before, you know, sorting all this stuff out. So I, I think that her, you know, again, it, it, it all depends on how strong that evidence is. But I, I don't know that I would class this as an abduction. This is just parents breaking up and they had different ideas about long term where they wanted to be. And he got into court before she was able to set all of those roots that were probably necessary in England. That's just my impression. But we'll see when the evidence comes out. Well, so does he have to give over the passports? I mean, like, how long will this take? Is she what rights now does Sophie have if, if Joe's just like, They're my, I got them. No, you can't have them. And then they have to go through this process you're talking about. Like, what? how's that affect Sophie? Yeah, so typically when when an action's filed in the U.S. over custody, um, that, that court is going to want to say, hey, everyone stay here in this jurisdiction in that state until we start sorting stuff out. Because otherwise, you would just have people fleeing the jurisdiction, and then you'd have to try and bring them back. So basically, that's what incentivizes people when there's a custody dispute to go ahead and quickly file in the state where they want the kids to remain because you kind of lock them in uh, while the court is figuring it out. And unfortunately, our process in court is very slow, so you could end up locking the kids there for a long time. So because she's declaring, hey, you know, England is the habitual residence, that's where they belong. Joe would refuse to provide the passports and argue in court that if Sophie were allowed to go to England, that she would not return the kids to the United States. And that would make her a risk of what he would call an abduction. So when you have all these claims going on, the courts is basically status quo here, you know, just maintain them in the U.S. for a moment, figure out what's going on. Uh, they may allow some visits to England and but have to come back to the U.S. My guess is this is going to go on for months and months, maybe even years if they don't settle it. And again, it's, it's a very difficult one to settle because if she's saying, hey, my life and my family is in England and this is where it's, you know, she thinks it's best for her and her kids to be or their kids to be in England. He's never going to agree to that. So right. that kind of forces it to go to trial. The midpoint between, you know, here in England is probably somewhere in the water. So there's no way you can like, how do you settle that? Um, it's one or the other. And, you know, the only thing that I guess is good about this situation is they have enough money where they could do international schooling. They could have put the kids on flights and go back and forth. They could fly back and forth more than most of us who would, you know, if our kids were you know living in a different country, we would lucky to see them once a year. Wild. It's sad. I mean, yeah, a good point. It's a little bit easier, but it's still going to be very heartbreaking and sad to see this. The kids have to suffer. I think that's always what I appreciate about you and your insight is it's always, that's what this all is supposed to be about. Um, and everybody loses sight of that in these battles. And yeah, fair point that even Sophie, it's like, Sophie, is this really in the kid's best interest to remove Joe from their life? Um, we got to support both parents in this. Um, and I'm clearly both want to be in their children's lives. And to me, that's always the most important thing. If they're both fighting this passionately over the kids, these two need to see that and back off and realize for the sake of the kids, how do we solve this? So someone's going to, I guess, have to buckle and or the judge will just have to make that determination. We will keep you guys privy to that as more comes in. Make sure you go support Christopher Melcher over on Twitter, CA underscore divorce. Uh, give him a follow. He's always out there giving you insight there as well. Thank you for being here, sir. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for alerts as well. Uh, smash that thumbs up and let us know what you think. Who do you think is going to win this battle? Sophie or Joe, tell us down below. What do you think? Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet. I hit the wrong button, guys.